All right, so do you want to visit Vietnam? And in particular, do you want to visit Ho Chi Minh City? Today, I have what you need to know about not losing your money by scammers in Vietnam. There are some, believe it or not. So here we go. An Aussie in Vietnam, a podcast that gives you everything you need to know about people, places, and culture in Vietnam from fellas that live there. An Aussie, Aussie in Vietnam. Hồ Chí Minh City, Vũng Tàu, Cần Đánh, Huế, Hà Nội. Welcome to an Aussie in Vietnam. It's the poor season of the year. April is always the hottest part of the year and it's stinking hot during the day. Uh, even here inside, it's well over 30 degrees and I am stinking hot. So welcome, but today we are going to talk about about six things, or well, it's actually seven, but I'm going to group two together. Six things that you should be aware of so you don't lose your money to scammers and cheats in Vietnam. There are a few, there's not many, it's pretty safe, but there's not many. But every time a tourist walks away from Vietnam, and even an expat walks away from Vietnam with a bad taste in their mouth, they have usually come in contact with one of these six things. And it really makes people angry. So if you know what to, uh, what, what to avoid, what to see what's coming, then you can also avoid losing unnecessary money to scammers and cheats uh, in Ho Chi Minh City. So here we go. Number one. Bentan Market. Let's start right at the top. Bentan Market. So Bentan Market is uh, one of probably the most famous market in Vietnam. It is very much a tourist market. You rarely see Vietnamese people shopping there. And it's the place where everyone goes to make themselves think they're in Vietnam. But let me tell you that Bentan Market is not even close to being Vietnamese. Um, in a normal market, people don't barter. The price is the price. And for some reason, uh, because of history, uh, Bentan Market has developed this idea of bartering for, for, for items that are being sold. Now, the good side of Bentan Market is that if you are a large person like myself, you've got a big shoe uh, over 45, uh, you wear a big size, you know, the 2XLs, etc., and bigger. Bentan Market isn't a bad place to go for, for those types of um, uh, bigger clothes. However, you pay a premium. Essentially, bartering is not part of the Vietnamese culture. And what they do at Benton Market is they give you a ridiculous price, thinking that you don't understand the currency, and then they try and talk you down. And it's just, it's, it's just not, not, not fun. It's just not fun. It makes me angry every time I have to go there and I avoid the place. I've been living here for 10 years and I've probably been to Benton Market shopping, oh, let's say five times in 10 years. And that was basically because I needed to buy something like a, a, a big pair of flip-flops or running shoes or something and I had nowhere else to go. A place to visit, there are many places to visit. Um, here they are. Um, number one is Russia Market. Okay, so, so if you just go into Google and type in Russia Market Saigon, it will give you the location. It's a short taxi ride from Benton Market, and it's it's all fixed price. The clothes are good quality, and it's a lot more comfortable to shop there. Um, another place not quite as comfortable, but but it's still pretty good, is just up the street, about 300 metres on the opposite side of the road, is Saigon Square. Again, there, the price is the price. Sometimes you can talk them down a little bit, but generally speaking, they don't, they don't play games with you. Um, another place that I quite like, and it's, it's, it's a little bit off the beaten track, is uh, in Win Chai. So Win Chai is a street that is... Uh, two streets back from Benton Market. And if you go down the street about a kilometre uh, towards uh, District 10 uh, or District 5, I should say, uh, there is a little market down there, a little street market, and the prices are pretty good down there. So that's another place you can shop. But just avoid Benton Market, okay? You will walk out of there with no money in your pocket and you won't have brought what you want. It's just a place that is not fun to visit. 
Number two on the list is, well, it's, it's actually, this is, the, this is the, the dual one, the two one, okay? It's uh, shoe shine people, but also it's the people that walk around um, District 1, especially outside Independent Palace, around Dukbar Church, etc. And they're carrying the, the stick on their shoulder with the... Um, with coconuts in in the in the, in the little carriers like the traditional Vietnamese uh, way of carrying things, so I put them together because they basically do the same thing. So with the shoe shine guys um, uh, around Diamond Plaza, Independent Palace, anywhere that's a, a, a particular tourist location, they will come up, they will push themselves onto you, and basically force you to take your shoes off so they can clean them. Then, after they do that, they won't give you your shoes back. And um, I've had actually a friend of mine who was charged something like $75 for a shoe clean because they got a really expensive pair of shoes off their feet. And this person just went along with it to be polite. And then they wouldn't give it back and it ended up costing them $1.5 million. So, you know, um, it's, it's not very good. Uh, basically, if a shoe shine person comes up to you, uh, you just say no, 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 no. Um, even to the point where I'm quite lucky now because I wear sandals uh, everywhere basically because of the wet weather, and you can't shine, you can't, you can't shine sandals. But if if one of them does come up to me and, and ask me if they want to clean the shoes, I just I just shake my hand and I say com kan. Com kan means I don't need it. Um, com is is no, and kan is need. Okay, no need. Com kan and I keep on walking. Um, it's very important. Similar with the guys that carry the coconuts on the on their shoulder, what they will do is they will walk up to you and they will hand the, the stick to you, the carry stick with the coconuts in it, and put it on your shoulder, and then ask to, and they'll, they'll take a photo for you, thinking that they're being friendly, and then after that, they start asking for money. Um, again, if you see if you see them, don't even buy a coconut from them because like a coconut juice at any given point is about ten thousand, about fifty cents maximum, um, and yeah, seventy five cents maybe. These people charge you upwards of two or three dollars for a coconut, uh, and it's just you know it just makes me so angry. So if you see them, un unless you want to give them your money, um, just don't accept it. Say no, again, say when they walk up to you, say com gun, com gun, com gun. Okay, and keep on walking, because they're only out to to take your money. Full stop. Nothing, nothing more, nothing less. So number three on the list for things to avoid and not get scammed is the Japanese area in Ho Chi Minh City. The Japanese area is a walk from Benton Market. Um, basically, it's to the east, and it's off Lake Ten Ton. Um, if you just put into Google Japanese area, this is a few hems, a few streets, a few laneways um, between a couple of major roads. And it's basically full of Japanese style places and girly bars. And let me tell you, um, they have one motive in mind, and that is to take your money. Okay, so uh, I just say don't enter the area. Please just don't enter the area. You know, you, you might think, oh, it's great, you know, if you're into the girly bar scene and stuff like that. Um, you might think, oh, wow, they're, they're beautiful and et cetera, et cetera. Let me tell you, you will walk into a bar with a pocket full of money and you'll walk out with nothing. If you have a credit card, as we've heard with a story um, of one of the bars, not in that area, but in another area of District 1, uh, one man lost 40 something thousand dollars in two nights of entertaining at, uh, at one of these establishments. Um, I went to one once to meet a friend and I was ripped off. The way I was ripped off was that I was shown a menu and I just got a basic beer. Um, it was a tiger beer, uh, which are worth all of about, let's say, $2 in, um, in most city bars. And I walked out of there spending something like about 14 or $15 for two, two drinks. And what they did, they showed me a menu um, which had very small pricing on it. And then when they showed me the menu again, I noticed that the, the, the prices were in American dollars and not in Vietnam Dom. And I was taken for a ride, you know, basically I was taken for a ride. So um, don't go to the Japanese area, full stop. If you, if you want to lose your money, go to the Japanese area. If you don't want to lose your money, 
don't go to the Japanese area in Saigon. And quite similarly, probably you could almost group that, but not as bad, is Bui Vien. Okay, so Bui Vien has been traditionally known as the backpacker street of um, Ho Chi Minh City, where all the backpackers went to get a cheap drink and a cheap meal. It's now changed, okay? Big business owns it, and the idea of Bui Vien is to get as much money out of tourists as, they poss- as you possibly can. Um, it's actually quite popular with young Vietnamese people now. A lot of Vietnamese people will go there of a, of a, of a night time. Um, but for a tourist, especially a, a, you know, a responsible tourist, you just don't need to go there. It's, it, it doesn't represent Vietnam. It doesn't have any of the culture that Vietnam has. And it's just not a very nice place to visit. I've not been there um, for a beer or to go out probably for six years. And you know, I've lived here for 10 years. And oh, I'm just not missing anything. If you want to have fun and you want to go out and enjoy yourself, there are a whole range of bars across the city, uh, both Western style bars and more Vietnamese style that you can um, you can experience and enjoy. Okay, there is a, a street food. There is, as I said, bars. There is restaurants um, here. Here, uh, the the tradition is not to have, or the the culture is not to have a bar as such, but to have a restaurant. So if you want to have a few beers, you go to like a seafood restaurant or something. You sit there, you nibble on the food, you drink the beer and and have fun with your friends. If you want to, if you're like me, a sports lover, you want to want to see a game of football in Australia or soccer in England or something, there are a whole range of bars available that will do that, um, show them for you. The beer is a little bit more expensive. I've mentioned that in my uh, last podcast, but you have a good time and you spend a reasonable amount of money okay um, and you don't feel like you've been ripped off so so avoid Bui Vin. you just don't need to go there okay and it happens in Bui Vin. it happens around Benton Market and it happens right across the center of District 1 is people on the street soliciting for massages okay so they'll have a shop on the street and they'll say come in come in massage very cheap very cheap very cheap let me tell you they can some are okay And some are just downright awful, okay? And, uh, you know, the the, the, the $5 massage at the the front door ends up being a $50 massage by the time you walk out. Essentially, the culture of Vietnam is not to solicit for things. So, you know, um, it's quite easy. Get onto Google. Do, if you really want to have a good massage and, you know, you you want to, you really want to have a relaxing time, quite easy. Do a search on Google, spas and massage, have a look around, look at the pictures. They, m- most of the good ones actually have the prices on their, on their Google Maps or their, their, their website. And, you know, either walk to it, take a taxi, take a grab, and, and just go there and enjoy it, okay? Um, and don't forget, always tip the staff at a massage place. Massage um, um, staff get paid very, very little in Vietnam, and it's very important that we uh, support them by by um by just giving him a little bit of a tip yeah um that i always do that um i have a blind massage close to me and you know i always give the guys a good tip because they're, they're good people and they do they do a good job all right so the next one fits in pretty close to all of the other ones and that is the girly bars in district one so Ho Chi Minh City is famous for having girly bars. And so, so does Vung Tao, by the way, but that's a different story. So if you go to these girly bars, some of them are okay. Okay, Some of them are pretty, are pretty fair income. Yeah, they're, they're good. You go there, you have a beer. Um, the prices are reasonable. You might buy a, uh, one of the staff members a drink and have a chat to them or whatever. It's reasonable. Um, but some of them are not. Okay, and so the the way I look at it is that if there are girls out on the street trying to get you to go into the bar, you know, and say come in, come in, come in, and I've got you know skimpy dresses on and 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 doing all this kind of stuff, don't go in there. Okay, don't go in because no doubt that you know they suck you in, and once you're in there, it's it's a free for all. And as I said before earlier in this in this podcast. There was an experience where uh, an Australian tourist businessman uh, lost forty something thousand US dollars in two nights in a um, girly bar in pa- in Pasteur actually. So um, so remember this name Pasteur 
Um, and basically, it's 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 between Hamney and uh, and Windhoe, um, most of the of, of the girly bars around town. Um, they're great to look at. You drive past and you have a look, and oh, she's all right, you know. But at the end of the day, just be careful. Yeah, I, I heard another another example of a man who went to a lady boy bar, and this bar um, he had two drinks with a friend. And they brought the bill out, and the bill was enormous. And he was actually an expat, and he refused to pay it. And so what they did, uh, it was, you know, it was 2 o'clock in the morning or something, and they closed the front door. They locked the front door, and they wouldn't let him out. And he sat there until 5 a.m. Um, until um, something happened and the, the situation had been resolved. But um, it's, it's, it's just not, not good, you know. If you don't want to lose your money, if you want to walk around with money in your pocket and feel safe and, 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 and enjoy Ho Chi Minh City, don't go to the girly bars. And my final one for today, I've, I've actually already mentioned it, but, you know, um, I, I'll make a special point. The taxis. Now, some of the taxi companies are good. Um, Milam and uh, Vinasun uh, taxis are generally okay. Everyone else is 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 a real struggle. Uh, pe- uh, people like Saigon Taxis, Demsen Taxis, um, you know, th- there's a whole range of these different taxi companies. They will the, the the scams are unbelievable. Number one, these smaller companies will actually um, trick their their meters. So, for example, I took a, a taxi. It was a Saigon tourist taxi from the city to my home. I know that the cost of a taxi is a maximum of two hundred thousand, and in, in when I took this particular taxi company, the price was five hundred thousand. Yeah, pretty obvious, um, and it was on the meter. You know, the other scam is, and also Vinasun and Milam could be involved in this. And another one is that, um, especially if they get you from the airport, they will take you, and then they will they, into the city. It's about one hundred and fifty thousand, and then when they get to the city, the driver will go, you know, no English, no English, and he will show you a five hundred thousand uh, dom note. Um, that's twenty five dollars. Now, now, the the trip from the airport to the city is about ten dollars. And he will say, no, give me this, give me this, give me this. And you are thinking, oh, well, $25, it's pretty reasonable in my country. Um, however, it's nothing more than a scam. They, um, they, 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 they just take your money, okay? Uh, one of the ways out of this is there are a number of um, share ride services like Grab. Um, this, uh, so I can't remember, said in a, there's an electric company, electric car company that, uh, that runs the, um, the, the Vietnamese cars, um, and they're quite good. Um, and, uh, B, B, E, uh, is another one I think that has cars available as well, but just have a look on the, uh, Google play store and you'll see a number of apps for, for, for ride share in Vietnam. They're much safer to use and you know the price up front, okay? Um, have cash with you, you pay the driver in cash, and if you're coming out of the airport, always make sure you give them 20,000 tip because they have to pay the extra to get into the airport and out. So they are my big ones for having a safer trip in, um, in, in Vietnam or in Ho Chi Minh City. Now, it's not the only ones. There are other things that happen. There are things that happen in shops and there are things that happen everywhere. But in saying all that, if you just make some logical choices as to where you go and what you do, generally speaking, it's a really trustworthy and reliable country. I have had enormously good experiences across the country with people being honest and caring and friendly. And I've had many, I've had a plethora of more good experiences than I've had bad ones. Um, the, the bad experiences generally work their way around the key tourist regions where people are unaware of what, uh, what, what is, you know, what is the, the, the value of money and what to do. 
and they play on the, the lack of um, communication to try and rip people off. It is such a small part of the country. 99.9% .9 of this country is amazing, and there is just that one little part that they, sometimes people do get ripped off. And Vietnamese people get it too, you know, it's not just for tourists, so, you know, it happens everywhere. But it's such a small thing, okay? So that's my super tips for having money in your pocket and keeping it in your pocket if you visit Ho Chi Minh City. Thank you very much. Have a great week. Um, it's Easter weekend this weekend as I record this. So happy Easter to everyone around the world. And see you next time on an Aussie in Vietnam. Bye-bye.